Hello students, in this video we'll prove that if fn converges uniformly to f and gn converges uniformly to g, then fn plus gn converges uniformly to f plus g, but the same result is not true for products. So let's suppose that fn map a into r converges uniformly to f, and that gn And GN mapping A into R converges uniformly to G. Then FN plus GN converges uniformly to F plus G. But, and this is the key thing, but fn times gn may not converge uniformly to f times g, even though we'll do so point-wise, okay? Great. All right, so now what can we say? So let's prove this theorem over here. So proof, let epsilon be greater than zero, and pick n and n, n and m and n, such that what? Such that fn of x minus f of x is less than epsilon over 2 for n bigger than or equal to n capital, and then gm of x minus g of x less than epsilon over 2 for m bigger than or equal to m capital. Now we do the classic trick. We let n tilde be the maximum of those two things so that both these estimates are true, right? So now if we let Let what? So we let n tilde be the maximum of n and m. And then what can we say? Then I can estimate, and then let's let n be bigger than or equal to n tilde. Then fn of x. Of course, these estimates are true for all x, right? These are true for all x in the set A, right? fn plus gn of x minus f of x plus g of x is less than or equal to what by the triangle equality is less than or equal to fn of x minus f of x plus gn of x minus g of x. Those are that's less than epsilon over two. That's less than epsilon over two for all. So this is less than epsilon for all x and a, and that proves the uniform convergence. Excellent. So in other words, fn plus gn converges uniformly to f plus g. Excellent. Now the same thing is not true for the product, right? Here's a counterexample to the product. Counterexample. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to let fn be x times 1 minus 1 over n on the interval 0 to 1. Then, of course, we know that these fn's are going to converge uniformly to x, right? Then fn converges uniformly to x. And then I'm going to do a trivial example. So gn, these are fn of x, gn of x, is going to be a constant sequence, just 1 over x squared, right? On the interval, let's just say 0 to 1. Okay. And so if, in particular, this function is, is well-defined on 0 to 1 open, so I can define this function. I can say that also that fn converges, uh, fn of x converges to x uniformly on the open interval, to if it converges on the closed interval, right? And so now what can I say? So now, now what? Now gn converges uniformly to what? 1 over x squared, and these both occur on 0, 1, 0, 1, right? But... Um, what is the fn, so fn of x, um, so the limit function, of, of course, over here is just going to be 1 over x squared, right? And so let's look at the, um, so the question becomes is, does fn gn converge to 1 over x convert? So let's look at fn of x times gn of x is 1 over x times 1 minus 1 over n, right? And I'm going to subtract off what? Then I'm going to subtract off 1 over x from this, so if I subtract off absolute value, 1 over x minus this thing over here is going to be this absolute value, okay? 
And so now what happens over here, this is just going to be a 1 over, um, so these are going to cancel with that. I'm going to have an absolute value of just a 1 over n times x, right? And so this is just equal to 1 over nx. And the supremum of this, so the supremum of this difference, supremum over n of these things over here, supremum over x in the interval 0, 1, is infinite for every n, and so that proves that this, these fn times gn do not converge uniformly to f times g, which is the limit. So uniform convergence of the product can fail if one of the functions is unbounded. However, if both the functions f of the sequences fn and gn are uniformly bounded, then you can prove uniform convergence of the product. Thank you very much.